I'm Iris Sokol. I work at the Albemarle, Albemarle County Schools in Virginia, and I work with our ed tech team, our innovation team, I work with our libraries, um, and a variety of other things. I think what's most important to me as I, as I sit here at a technology conference is for people to think about what technology really means and what it means for children and what it means in terms of control. What we've tried to do very consistently is to give the power to our, our children at every level. And, and there are really good reasons for that. Our computers uh, are, when we give computers to our children, they are in control of them. They are the local administrators of their machines. They have access to all sorts of systems and things they find. When we give internet to students, our goal is for them to explore widely and use social media and use whatever they can to investigate their world. But technology means a lot more to us than just the technology that's on display at tech conferences. Technology is how students manipulate the world. And that can be very traditional tools like saws and drills and, um, and hammers. It can be the kinds of chairs people get to sit in or whether they choose to sit in chairs at all. It can be the lighting in classrooms. It can be whatever helps students create an environment that allows them the power. And what we see is a real broadening of who gets to succeed in our schools. So, you know, I, I have a couple of uh, middle school students who are favorites of mine. And they're favorites because they have traditionally had a very hard time getting by in the, in the regular kind of classroom format. But when given the tools that we've given them, the kind of uh, laptop technology, the kind of handheld technology, um, access to things like 3D printers, access to traditional tools, we've seen remarkable things. So we've seen students that some teachers would label as unsuccessful develop remarkable capabilities, for instance, a, um, a sensor grid system to help pitchers understand whether they're throwing balls or strikes, using um, lasers guided by Arduinos. We've had other students build um, tree houses in their middle school cafeteria. We've had others develop, you know, complex historical recreations of um, of technology so that they could learn and explain how things work um, in deep ways to other students. We've seen all this happen because we've opened things up and, and let things go. And then the students grab these technologies and run with it. And students who would traditionally be unsuccessful in a period where many students lose complete interest in school take off instead and become absolute leaders. We have one of these students even going to the White House to demonstrate their projects. Um, we have others who've turned from kids who are in fights every day to, to ones who are sort of student leaders. And it all stems from the nature of trusting what children can do, trusting in childhood, um, believing that if kids make mistakes, we can help them get past that instead of punish them, them for doing things wrong. Um, and taking the controls off because we know that if we can develop children's minds and hearts to a point where they are the filters and they are the controllers and they are the developers and they are the makers, we will be building successful adults um, for a future that we really can't predict. So I just want people to stand back a step and let the children leave.